Yeah, how's your face, mate? Well, from the smother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well executed, I would have thought. Uh, yeah, it's one of those ones where you just, for sure and certain, Scott Pendlebury is just going to put it straight over your hands, but unfortunately he's put it straight into my jaw. He apologised after the game, but um, yeah, I think we end up kicking a goal out of it from the next play, so um, no, we'll take that. <laughs> Mate, uh, obviously a great win last night, but uh, it came in a really big toll, losing Harris. How, if, if he's out until, Fags didn't know last night, but if yep. he's out until maybe finals, how challenging does that make the, the run home to, to set up a top two spot? Uh, I'm not sure if it makes it any more challenging. Um, you know, we've got a couple of really good key defenders, Matty Eagles, Jack Payne, that have um, all had AFL experience over the past 12 months. So um, as much as a loss Harris will be, um, I'm backing those guys to come in and do a role, although it's probably not to the standards of Harris. I'm sure they'll certainly give it their all and um, feel the position available. I mean, you, you obviously haven't got any more results, but let's say he's out until finals. Um, you know, does it, if he comes back in, Will he need work, do you think? I mean... Uh, well, the, the beauty about hamstring injuries these days is you start running pretty much straight away. So he'll run tomorrow and um, he'll be able to keep that fitness up. It's just more the high-end stuff that will be a concern. But, um, you know, our staff, our medical staff have been all across the hamstring injuries. I think Ryan Lester, Daniel Rich had, you know, one week, two week ones, um, you know a month ago and they got back pretty quickly so hopefully it's um, not too bad and uh, you know he might even be able to get one in before the final series starts but um, once we get scans and know a little bit more um, we'll go from there but there'll be certainly I wouldn't have thought any risks taken. Coach said you guys were up and about after the win last night it obviously meant quite a bit to you. Yeah definitely I think um, when you go two players down halfway through a match um, and blokes have got to play extra time you know Kitty, Kitty Coleman first game the intensity of AFL footy for him to pretty much have to play a full game. His first um, game was extraordinary. Um, you know, obviously we hadn't beaten Collingwood for a long time as well, so um, it was great. It was great to win in front of our fans um, who came out last night. I think it was 16,000, extremely loud. Um, so to, to get the result, um, you know, although we did get a goal, only one goal in the second half, um, I think defensively, you know, we really switched on and. Collingwood threw a lot of different looks at us. They threw Darcy Moore forward. You know, Cox was obviously a, a big mismatch for all our defenders with Harris out. So, really gritty and gutsy win, and um, you know, glad the boys enjoyed it. The coach last night said that the Gabba is the loudest stadium yeah. in Australia. Hasn't gone down particularly well with fans in Melbourne and Perth. <laughs> no. Are you backing the coach in that one? Oh, I'm absolutely backing the coach in that one. Um, Last year when Lint McCarthy took that mark against Geelong was by far the loudest noise I've ever heard. Now, I haven't played in front of 80, but I've played in front of 70, and I think the 30 that was here last year was a little bit louder than a 70 at the MCG. So something about it just echoing here is, um, you know, it's a real key asset to this ground, and um, anyone who can come and experience it live, they certainly should. You're about to go hold a trophy with Jack and out in front of this ground, mate. Have you let yourself think that there's a chance you could be holding a different trophy in, a, in about six weeks time? <laughs> oh, it'd be amazing to, uh, you know, to do, but, you know, obviously there's so much work to go into that still. Um, you know, we've got Gold Coast on Wednesday night. They're playing exceptional football all year, really. Uh, sort of reminds us, I was just talking to Jack, reminds us of us a couple of years ago when we were so close but just weren't getting the results um, and you keep toiling away and that'll eventually change for you and um, you know we won't look too far ahead than, than Wednesday night, we can't. Um, we need to be uh, locked on and really fine tune and execute our game plan a lot better than what we probably have. You know we're doing it in patches at the moment, we're certainly not doing it throughout the whole game so um, we need to really focus on that before thinking too far ahead. Like I said the other day, the pressure of being the Queensland team for the once in a lifetime grand final in Queensland could could be too much for the Lions or could get to the Lions. Do you, do you disagree or agree with that sentiment? Oh, I don't agree with him there, but um, look, how amazing is the opportunity that potentially we could um, be in a grand final um, in our home state? You know, certainly I never thought that would be possible, um, and you know, due to the COVID circumstances. Um, we're fortunate enough to the Gabba to get the grand final, but um, there's a lot of water to go under the bridge before that, but certainly won't be buying into the hype that, you know, it's a, a more expectation. We know our game plan's good enough and we execute it to the best of our ability, so, you know, we'll just be focusing on that. 
You're a little miffed that, you know, perhaps you haven't entered the Premiership conversation as much as you think you might be. You know, they're still talking the Richmonds and the West Coast and the Geelongs and Ports and, you know, the Lions seem to be in the next group, don't they? Yeah. Well, that's... I mean, they're proven teams. They've done it, haven't they? They've, um, you know, they've played in a number of final series consecutive years in a row. Obviously, Richmond's won the last two or three or whatever they've done. They've been exceptional for a number of years now. Geelong the same all the way back to 2008. Geelong just always seem to find a way. So, um, you know, look, they're obviously proven sides. We need to prove ourselves, but we feel like we're taking the steps in the right direction. And, um, you know, if we can play our best footy over the next, you know, six weeks, we'll certainly give ourselves a chance to. Just, just a quick one. I mean, given what happened with the Richmond boys, I mean, was there any extra message from above of the Lions just to be, you know, really aware of your protocol? Yeah, absolutely. It'd just be diligent. I mean, um, you know, we're in a very fortunate circumstance that we're still able to play um, and go and do our jobs and provide entertainment for the fans at home, and especially for the um, fans and people back in Victoria who are doing it so tough. So, you know, there's a real, um, you know, duty of us, duty of care to make sure that we do the right things, um, you know, abide by our rules that are given to us and we just went over them again last night and made sure the boys are all across that so we don't have any mishaps ourselves.